Hot or BriggsAuto.com. Hey, look what's going on at Briggs Auto. Briggs. Now at 6, commissioners in Bourbon County, Kansas, propose a tax increase to fund emergency medical services. Plus, new evidence comes to light in the search for a missing University of Missouri student. And the Oklahoma Route 66 Association looks to revive efforts to preserve historic Ribbon Road in Ottawa County, Oklahoma. The four states most watched news starts now. Barry County, Missouri authorities say a naked man was shot after breaking into a home and assaulting a woman and two children. This is KOAM News at 6. I'm Tanya Bach. It happened last Thursday in a home near Cassville. Authorities say 18 year old Corey Hilburn forced his way into the home through a side door while naked. They say while inside, he assaulted the woman and children with his hands and hit them with a rifle. During the assault, the rifle fired and struck Hilburn. He suffered a non life threatening gunshot wound. The woman was also taken to the hospital. Hilburn pled not guilty to charges of first degree assault, armed criminal action and burglary, among other charges. Newly released body cam footage shows a missing Missouri College student on the night of his disappearance. On Monday, Metro Nashville police released this photo showing a brief exchange between Riley Strain and an officer the night of March 8th. Video from earlier shows the 22 year old University of Missouri student stumbling and falling after friends say he was kicked out of a bar. The next morning, they called police when they realized he was missing. Thank you for getting the word out and keeping the word out and please keep don't stop sharing. Don't stop sharing till we bring Riley home. Authorities did find Strain's debit card on the embankment of the Cumberland River, not far from where he was last seen. Teams are continuing to search the river for any sign of the missing student. We'll have more on the search for Riley Strain coming up on KOAM News at 10. And it's investigation into a fatal crash over the weekend near Neosho. Troopers say Christopher Dibel of Monette, Missouri, was traveling west on US 60. Dybul's 1994 Ford Ranger left the roadway to the right. He then overcorrected and overturned. Dybul was thrown from his vehicle. Authorities pronounced him dead at the scene. Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty joining us now with a first look at weather. Well, of course, a uh, cold day outside for us today. Uh, it was chilly yesterday, but today cold. We only got up to 42. We started out this morning at 26 degrees. We should be at 61, so almost 20 degrees below where we should be for this time of the year. We're going to cool back down as we go through the overnight hours. We're still kind of sitting into lower 40s right now. And that's pretty much the case. You do get mid to upper 40s once you get into our western counties. Also, it's been kind of breezy, so we have these northwesterly winds sustained. 15 to 20. So of course that makes it feel a little bit cooler than what it is. It feels like lower 30s to near 40 once you get into uh, southeastern Kansas, also northeastern parts of Oklahoma. But clear skies. We're going to continue to see the clear skies as we go through the rest of the evening hours as we drop back through the 30s, upper 20s again. But a big warm up tomorrow. We're going to look at that here in just a bit. All right, thanks, Doug. Efforts to rehabilitate the historic Ribbon Road in Ottawa County, Oklahoma, may have found new life. Those efforts started in 2020, but concerns slowed the efforts, and then the pandemic brought it to a halt. And now, almost three years later, Ottawa County officials have reached the next step of reviewing the historic asset by seeking federal funds. The issue for the Oklahoma Route 66 Association now is protecting and preserving the historic roadway not replacing it. You can read more about the efforts to preserve Ribbon Road on our website at koamnewsnow.com. Bourbon County Commissioners are proposing a retailer sales tax to entice medical providers to open an ER. KOAM's Amber Jenkins joins us live in studio with more. This reseller tax, retailer's tax, could bring back emergency department to Bourbon County. Bourbon County's only emergency department closed last December. Since then, Commissioner Jim Harris says the county has been in negotiations with other medical providers to fill in the gap. According to Harris, providers are hesitant to make an agreement because operating an emergency department in Bourbon County isn't profitable. 
Therefore, this retailer's sales tax, if approved, will help cover operations for an emergency department. Some residents understand the need for an ER, but do not agree with more taxes. We've got to show that we will have some funding to sign agreements with them because they're not going to come here and lose $750,000 a year just because they like us. So we're get, getting ahead of the game, starting the funding coming in and show these folks that we're serious. We will have revenue to help cover your losses. The special election will be held on May 14th. KOMs reached out to community groups and other officials for a statement, but have yet to receive one. But when we do, it will be on our website, koemnewsnow.com. Tanya, back to you. Thanks, Amber. The Joplin Public Library offered take-home Zen Garden kits for adults today. The library provides the kits once a month. JPL uses the occasion to promote the library and let folks know it offers more than books that they take away that the library offers many types of different things. Um, a lot of times I think people think of the library as just books, um, but we offer a lot of other like programs, resources, and things like that. And so with our take-home kits, we just kind of hope that um, someone finds some sort of outlet for something to do. Teens could also take home crafts and have fun painting glow rocks. Well, the beginning of baseball season marks a sure sign of spring, and John has a preview of the Web City Cardinals opening day coming up later in sports. But first, students at Missouri Southern look to sink their teeth into a brand new degree program. Starts at only $13,995, and that's with no hidden fees. Buy your dream home with the convenience of the Arvest Home for Mia. Goodbye, limits. Hello, possibilities. Missouri Southern students may have a new degree path starting this fall. KOAM Samantha Walker has more on the future of a food science and nutrition program. It's a great opportunity for students in our region. The Missouri Southern Board of Governors has approved a new undergraduate degree program in food science and nutrition. The program, which will be under the kinesiology department, is made possible through a Department of Education grant. So it gives us an opportunity to look at what are the needs in this region based on our employer needs and um, what this was one that rose to the top. The university says this degree program will help address the rising needs of local industries. Um, the food industry is really growing in our area, in the Joplin area and with Northwest Arkansas and so we saw a lot of growth um, in jobs in this area for our students. The Food Science and Nutrition program will help students prepare for careers in things such as food safety, development, and marketing. We do know that when you have high demand fields, high demand disciplines added to your curriculum, that we see a growth in enrollment. And it's usually students who uh, otherwise wouldn't be interested because they're interested in this particular program. And the program director says she's already seen interest from possible future students. With 4-H and facts clubs, they often speak to me about how their students are interested in pursuing degrees with food and food science, and so I'm excited that we'll now have a program here at Missouri Southern to meet those students' needs. Reporting in Joplin, Samantha Walker, KOAM News. Well, the food science and nutrition program still needs approval from the state. The university hopes to have the program start in the fall of 2024. The Kansas City Current kicked off its season Saturday by making history. The team marked its historic opening with a 5-4 victory in front of a sellout crowd inside the first sports stadium dedicated to a women's professional sport. For the team's head coach, the occasion marked the beginning of substantial change for women's soccer. I'm so much more excited about uh, the stadium, about the, the, the atmosphere, about uh, this, this moment because this is something that uh, will change the, the, the world of women's soccer. I mean, this is the beginning of, of the change. Construction on the $117 million stadium began in 2022. The current was founded in 2020. A little later, Pitt State's red-hot softball team hasn't lost a game since last month. John has the details on one of the gorillas responsible for the hot streak. Plus, it's going to be a cold night tonight, but we are going to warm back up. Those details coming up.
weather camera footage of downtown Joplin sits atop the Cornell Arts and Entertainment Complex, home of Connect to Culture and Spiva Center for the Arts. Well, of course, a much colder day for us today. High temps only into lower 40s during the afternoon, which is almost 20 degrees below where we should be for this time of the year. But sunny, which we still have out there right now. It's also windy, which makes it feel a little bit colder. Of course, our Cornell Arts and Entertainment Complex Tower Cam 7th and Joplin Street looking off toward the north and to the east. 41 Stockton, Neosho, Anderson 43, 45 at Grand Lake, Pittsburgh. 42, 43 in Iola. Nawada is sitting at 48, 7th and range line. Looks pretty good, it's 42. Northerly winds at about 10, but of course, we've had gusts a little bit higher than that. These will slowly back down as we go through the overnight hours, but it is gonna stay breezy at least the next several hours. And then eventually, later on tonight, the winds swap right back out of the south and it gets windy again tomorrow. We're gonna have winds gusting 30 to 35 miles per hour, but that is going to help us warm up uh, significantly warmer than what we saw today. All right, clear skies. We stick with the clear skies throughout the evening hours. Not a whole bunch going on here. Our next little wave out across parts of Arizona into New Mexico. It's a weak upper level wave. You can see the counterclockwise swirl will eventually head toward us late this week and then heading into uh, at least toward the weekend. You can see it slowly meanders its way toward us. Finally, gets out into the Central Plains late Wednesday, Wednesday night and Thursday. Again, it's weak, so it's not gonna have a ton of moisture. Slowly kind of works by as we get into Thursday and then into Friday, but it is gonna give us some rain chances across the region. All right, let me take you through time for us tonight, 29 or 30, so another below freezing night. Southerly winds pick up during the morning hours. We warm upper 50s by noon. Most of us 68, 69 case in point, 68 in Carthage, Neosho 67, 72 in Benita Parsons up to 73. Tomorrow night, not as cold. We back down lower 40s. And then as we head into Wednesday, we stay into the upper 60s once again. All right, your Tuesday, 34 in the morning, 56 by noon into the upper 60s, high temp of about 68. Then we'll start to see those rain chances increasing. So here's late Wednesday, a few scattered showers, mainly in our southern counties, and then some showers start to push through. The better chance is gonna be southern counties as we go into Thursday. Here's Thursday afternoon, and then kind of sneaking out of here by the time Thursday night rolls around. Another little front drops in on Friday. Here's Friday afternoon, so a few quick little showers that push through. So none of these storm systems are big, so we're not gonna get a lot of rain, but we're gonna get some later on this week, maybe upwards to a quarter of an inch in spots, but that looks to be about it. No severe weather this week after we had three rounds of it last week, so that's good news. Should return next week. 68 for you tomorrow, 69 on Wednesday, into the 50s Thursday and Friday. Those showers, we dry out for the weekend, but cooler, and then thunderstorms. That's our next severe chance next mon Monday. All right. Well, we always use the rain. We can use it. We can. All right. I love these temperatures, Doug. Yeah, it looks keep, good. Keep them going. Thanks, Doug. Well, don't forget, you can be the first to know about the day's weather with the KOAM Skywatch Weather App. Get severe weather updates sent straight to your phone free of charge. It's available in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store, the KOAM Skywatch weather app. Still ahead, high school baseball season begins in the four states and Fort Scott basketball brings home an award from the state tournament. John Dales has those stories and more up next. Sino is the for Honda. The best deals for the best used cars are only at Roper Honda. Today's news brought to you by Kubota of Joplin. Baseball season is beginning in the four states and this afternoon several of our local teams played their first game since last spring. One of those being Webb City who's coming off a state tournament appearance in 2023. Now last time out Cardinals were playing in the class five third place game. Today they open up the year against Bentonville West on the road. 
Now the Wolverines have already begun their season in Arkansas. They have a 2-2 two two record entering today. I'll give you an update on this game's final score later tonight at 9-10. Now, Pitt State softball is one of the hottest teams in the country. The Gorillas hold a 20-game winning streak. Their last loss nearly a month ago. That was on February 23rd. And today, Pitt State infielder Hannah Burnett is named the MIAA Co-Hitter of the Week. She shares the award with Emily Duramis from Central Oklahoma. Now, when PSU's six wins over the weekend, Burnett hits 600 with 12 hits, four RBIs, five runs, and four stolen bases. She also had an 800 slugging percentage this weekend. Three of her 12 hits went for extra bases, and she helped the Gorillas go 6-0 in the MIAA NSIC crossover. Meanwhile, across the conference, Missouri Southern's Cole Gaiman is named the MIAA Pitcher of the Week for the second week in a row and for the third time this season already. The Webb City alum started in Pittsburgh on Friday afternoon and he struck out 10 Gorillas over seven and two thirds innings to pick up the win. He allowed just one run and four hits in that outing. Now, so far this year, Gaiman has a win-loss record of 6-0 and an ERA of 151. Opponent batting average against him is just 144. Now Fort Scott High School Basketball had both its boys and girls teams make the Class 4A state tournament just a couple weeks ago. And both teams received the annual Sportsmanship Award from the Kansas State High School Activities Association. This recognition comes from a special committee that evaluates the sportsmanship displayed by the players, coaches, cheerleaders, school cheering sections, and more during state tournament play. And while we are a week and a half away from Major League Baseball's opening day, Today, the Royals make it known to the public who will be their starting pitcher for their season opener on March 28th against the Twins. Cole Reagans will be the Royals opening day starter. After being acquired by KC in a trade from the Rangers on June 30th, Reagans was an immediate difference maker. He was named the American League Pitcher of the Month in August. That's when he went five innings plus in every single one of his starts and he finished the month with a 172 ERA. That was the best in baseball in that category. The 26-year-old left-hander had a 26-inning scoreless streak from August 18th to September 10th. He says it's an honor to be chosen to take the mound opening day at Kauffman Stadium. Back to our local college teams though, those two award winners that I mentioned, Pitt State softball, Missouri Southern baseball, few teams in the country have had better starts than those two teams. All right, well, we wish them both the best this season. Of course. All right, thanks, John. That's it for sports. We're back after this. Pete stopped working. I decided to call the pros at Pascal. Here's a look at what's coming up on KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. A new memorial is installed in Mount Hope Cemetery in Webb City to honor a police officer gunned down in the line of duty more than a century ago. Plus, the Parsons Library hosts an event about a serial killer family on the American frontier. And the first over-the-counter oral contraceptive is now available for purchase. Those stories and a lot more tonight on KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. Well, the Easter Bunny will soon officially be here, but he won't be here for long. In the meantime, you can catch the seasonal hopper at the North Park Mall for photos. If you or your pet is interested in getting their picture taken with the Easter Bunny, you have one more chance. That's next Monday for pets. Walk-ins are welcome, though reservations are recommended. You gonna do that? No. <laughs> it's not really up my alley. But you can. Go right ahead. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Final look at the weather. All right. It's going to be cold tonight. We're going to drop back upper 20s for overnight low. 68 tomorrow. So quite a bit warmer. 69. Some showers rolling in by Wednesday evening. Final sports note. In that Web City baseball game, Sam Weller hits a three-run homer. It's their first home run of the season and puts the Cardinals up by two. All right. Thanks, John. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you right back here at 10. Have a great evening and an even better tomorrow. to you.